Wizards of the Coast just put out a statement titled OGLs, SRDs, and 1D&D. So this is about the open game license. And I did a previous video on this, but the open game license is really key to what's made D&D such a vibrant game. It allows for the creation of third-party content, whether that's stuff people share for free or stuff that they make to sell. In fact, there's a lot of excellent third-party content out there and it can really expand your D&D game. Now, people were concerned because Wizards of the Coast has been saying that they think Dungeons & Dragons is under-monetized, meaning they think that when you're done playing a game of D&D, you still have too much money in your pockets. And they also have been saying that they want to adjust the open game license, which has made people really concerned. They've been facing a lot of criticism, especially because when they were asked direct questions about this, they kind of gave some, you know, really non-answer answers. Now, today they've put out a statement that they say is going to clear a lot of things up. And I'm a lawyer, so when I look at a statement like this, I can see certain things that just really jump out at me and mean things that they might not mean to sort of the ordinary person. Now, usual warnings, I'm a lawyer, I'm not your lawyer, and you can tell that because you're watching this video for free. Um, if I was your lawyer, I'd be charging you, and I do accept payment in gold pieces, but... Um, Let's sort of break this down here just so that we can demystify it a little bit. All right, here it is. OGLs, SRDs, and 1D&D. And I'll link this in the description below so you can check it out and check my work, make sure I'm not sort of fudging anything here. They say, we love the interest and passion the community has for D&D. We love D&D too. Whenever you see this, uh, what this tells you is that this is a company that is facing a PR disaster. This is how you phrase an oh crap PR statement. Uh, so when we see the D&D community concerned by rumors and misunderstandings, we want to clear the air and share the facts with you, even if it's a bit earlier than our original plan. Um, we'll talk about whether it's misunderstandings, but people have been certainly concerned by what's going on. You all matter to us and we want to provide transparency on how D&D will continue supporting third-party creators. We'll see if that's accurate as well. But this is really, as I said, a PR statement that says, oh, we have stepped in it. And, you know, the community is freaking out. We got to do something. And so they're going to sort of show their cards a little bit. Let's see what they say. So here are the facts. Will 1D&D include an SRD uh, slash be covered by an open game license? Yes. First, we're designing 1D&D with 5th edition backwards compatibility, so all existing creator content that is compatible with 5th edition will also be compatible with 1D&D. Now, this is not accurate, because already the stuff that's changed in 1D&D in is enough that if you have a module that is written for 5th edition, you're probably going to have to make some adjustments. You know, there's new spells, the mechanics work differently. There's all sorts of places where you might run into trouble. So a monster or a spell or a dungeon that's written for 5th edition is not fully backwards compatible. Second, we will update the SRD for 1D&D as we complete its development. Development that is informed by the results of playtests that we're conducting with hundreds of thousands of D&D players now. Um, this, no big deal. I mean, this just says we're going to create an SRD for uh, one D&D. Okay, but we don't know what that SRD is going to include at this point, but they're saying there will be one. Will the open game license terms change? Yes, we will release version 1.1 of the open game license in early 2023. And once it comes out, I will do a full deep dive into it and sort of take it apart and we'll look under the hood of it. Right now, all we've got is this statement that sort of says, hey, here's what we're what we're planning to do. The open game license needs an update to ensure that it keeps doing what it was intended to do. Allow the D&D community's independent creators to build and play and grow the game we all love without allowing things like third parties to mint D&D NFTs and large businesses to exploit our intellectual property. All right, let's back up here. First, has anyone been minting D&D NFTs? I don't think so. Um, I also don't think that there would actually have been any issue with somebody being able to create a D&D NFT out of the open game license. I think the only reason they're mentioning NFTs right now is that nobody's making NFTs anymore and everybody's kind of recognized those as a toxic kind of thing. 
And so they're throwing that in there so that people will go, oh, that's reasonable. That makes sense. We don't want people making D&D. Nobody was making D&D NFTs. So, yeah. And large businesses to exploit our intellectual property. Who's a larger business than Wizards of the Coast slash Hasbro? Um, I don't know. But I don't think that this was really an issue. Really, the people who were doing stuff with this and who are really concerned are small businesses. And, you know, independent people, people like myself. Um, I guess I'm transitioning from having, from just making fan, you know, sort of content for nothing to putting out videos that might be monetized. But yeah. So what's changing? First, we're making sure that OGL 1.1 is clear about what it covers and what it doesn't. OGL 1.1 makes clear it only covers material for created for use in or as tabletop role-playing games. And those materials are only ever permitted as printed media or static electronic files like EPUBs and PDFs. So one of the things I think it's pretty clear here is they want to shut down any possibility of somebody doing something like creating Pathfinder out of this. Uh, but they're also shutting down all sorts of other content. So other types of content like videos and video games are only possible through the Wizards of the Coast fan content policy or a custom agreement with us. To clarify, outside of printed media and static electronic files, the open gaming license doesn't cover it. Well, I mean, right now, I'm making a video, and I had planned to do a, a video talking about um, making a series of wall spells, and talking about, here's some new spells that you guys could use in your games if you wanted, but more talking about here is the design process that went into it. Here are the considerations that I used when I was making, you know, these spells to help other people design, you know, stuff themselves. Um, there's all sorts of people who make video content out there uh, talking about D&D &D and who might be discussing the rules and might be discussing all of these things. Um, I'm making a video right now. Uh, it concerns me if they want to cut videos out because lots of people want to consume, you know, their media in different formats. Um, video games, I don't know if this was an issue, but uh, they want to crack down on that, which might harm some indie, you know, video game designers. Uh, there's also other things in terms of static electronic files because this will really limit your ability to make electronic tools. And that is, I think, something that's important because electronic tools are really useful to a lot of people. So I don't really like where this is going, but um, we'll, we'll keep going. They say, will this affect the D&D content and services players use today? It shouldn't. The top v uh, v virtual tabletop pro platforms already have custom agreements with wizards to do what they do. Now, let's stop here they already have custom agreements do you think that they're going to continue to have those custom agreements once wizards has their own virtual tabletop because that's what they've said they're doing is they're building a virtual tabletop um they have no reason at that point to continue to have those licenses and i expect we'll see them to say you know what we are ending our relationships with these groups but the other thing is i like competition in the market I like the idea of a new virtual tabletop being able to be created from from scratch. You know, somebody says, you know what? The ones that are out there kind of suck and we want to improve on that and to build something new and different and vibrant. Um, but they're not, they're not going to be able to unless they make that custom agreement. And how are they going to be able to do that when they're, you know, approaching wizards to say, hey, we want to do this. Um, we have currently no users. We're just trying to design this. Um, I think it's going to be really hard to get another one off the ground, which of course we've just mentioned is in wizard's interests here because they've created their own virtual tabletop. So, um, why would they want more competition? All right. D and D merchandise like minis and novels were never intended to be part of the OGL and open gaming license 1.1 won't change that. Um, I mean, there's companies out there that make miniatures. Are there, you know, you can go on various places and have like a miniature custom made. Um, is that going to be something that they're going to potentially being 
be sued over now? That's concerning. Uh, creators wishing to leverage D&D for those forms of expression will need, as they have always need, or as they always have needed, custom agreements between us. I.e., we're going to be shaking some people down for some money. That's what that translates to. Second, we're updating the open game license to offer different terms to creators who choose to make free share alike content and creators who want to sell their products. Now, this is where things get fun because this is where they're coming after the third party, uh, you know, people like Kobold Press who sell uh, sell books. Some people have managed to turn their D&D hobby into a livelihood by writing, you know, materials for it. And the community is better off for that, you know, for that stuff being out there because I get to buy that stuff and I get to use it. And of course, Wizards is unhappy that they're not getting their cut. And so everything's going to get more expensive and it'll be harder for those companies to exist. And we should expect to see less of that content. All right. What does this mean for you as a creator? If you're making share-alike content, very little is going to change from what you're already used to. So this is if you're just posting stuff on Reddit, but keep in mind the share-alike rule, which means that this open game license kind of contaminates or infects and rides along with anything you put out there under this license. If you're making commercial content, and keep in mind, commercial content is, I mean, the test for commerciality is pretty low. Um, if you're putting something up there and it's pay what you want and you're not even covering the costs of the art that you used to make the, you know, that you hired artists or, you know, paid an AI, you know, company or whatever, you know, even if you're not actually recouping costs, they can say that's commercial content. Um, if you're selling ads on your materials, if you are, for example, having um, a Patreon uh, subscription that people can sign up to. All of this uh, puts you into commercial content. These videos are monetized. So commercial content, they're going to certainly be able to argue that. Uh, so relatively little is going to change for most creators. For most of you who are selling custom content, here are the new things you'll need to do. Okay, so, you know, they've said, oh, nothing's going to change. Oh, wait, there's going to be some big changes. One, accept the license terms and let us know what you're offering for sale. Now, we don't know what these license terms are, but I suspect that they're going to be much more like their fan content policy or their DMs Guild uh, policies, which require you to basically give access to wizards, um, which is fatal for a lot of people who want to create commercial content. But we don't know for certain. This is me uh, speculating on that one. However, you will be required to specifically accept a license. So before, the open game license was an open license, right? Literally, you could just sign on to it just by doing the things, by making the content. Now you have to, you, you know, this is no longer an open game license. This is you have to actually go in and accept that license. And again, open game license means that it's, everyone out there can do it but here now they're going to be able to cut people off right they're going to be able to say no we're we're going to pick and choose because you know we're going to have this platform for you accepting these license terms so it's not an open game license at all they're going to get to choose who can make content and who can't this is already a huge shift that they're trying to package as no big deal uh report Open game license related revenue annually if you make more than 50000 in a year. So not only that, but you're going to have to do accounting and sort of show them your books. And three, and this one is really clever. This one is kind of, kind of sneaky. Uh, include a creator product badge on your work. Now, let's talk about badges. Because if you're on the internet, you see these things all over the place, right? Um, you'll see, you know... Better Business Bureau badges or super lawyer badges on a web page or, you know, we accept payment from whatever company badges on a web page. Now, those badges, the way those end up getting worked is they get covered by various forms of intellectual property that applies just to the badge. And so they can say that you can't put a badge on your work unless you pay a license fee and it looks to me like this is what they're likely doing here 
that they're disguising that they're planning to look for a license fee um, in the creator badge. I'm, I, I hope that some people who are interviewing them specifically ask that question, like, is the creator badge going to be free? Um, is the creator badge going to be, you know, something that comes with its own restrictive license terms? What are the terms for using this creator product badge? Because if it's required and it has its own terms and payments and so forth, then that is a further restrict restriction on the whole idea of an open game license. When we roll out Open Game License 1.1, we will also provide explanatory videos, FAQs, and a web portal for registration to make navigating these requirements as easy and intuitive as possible. Now, I'm hoping that their explanatory videos and FAQs are a little less weasel wordy than this statement, because this statement, um, as a lawyer, um, I read a lot of this and I say, ooh, they're, they're up to some stuff they're they're being a little sneaky here and they're trying to spin this in a pr way while also telling us you know just in the name of transparency so people can't call them out for lying later um they're telling us all the nasty things they're doing but trying to spin it in a way that doesn't sound so bad all right um yeah this web portal means, of course, that if you want to do that accepting the license terms, they get to pick and choose. They'll be able to cut people off. It's not an open game license anymore. For the fewer than 20 creators worldwide who make more than $750,000 in income in a year, we will add a royalty starting in 2024. So again, not an open game license. They're, they're going to be wanting their cut on that. Uh, so even for the creators making significant money selling D&D supplements and games, no royalties will be due for 2023, and all revenue uh, below $750,000 in future years will be royalty-free. However, um, so people are going to say, oh, well, you know, I'm making $150,000, so that's just fine, but keep in mind this whole creator product badge. I suspect that there's going to be a lot of very small creators, people who are just starting to try, and you know, the way people get to be big creators is they start out as little tiny creators. And it doesn't take much of a push to knock a little tiny creator over entirely. Somebody who is making products right now and just earning beer money might stop that if they have to pay for this badge and so forth. And it just, you know, they're losing money on it. People are a lot more willing to keep knocking stuff out um, if they're, you know, getting a little bit of money for it, then if it's actually costing them money to do. So bottom line, the open game license is not going away, except it's not going to be an open game license anymore. You will still be able to create new D&D &D content, publish it anywhere, and game with your friends and followers in all the ways that make this game and community so great. Uh, but we're probably going to shut down all of our competition in the virtual tabletop uh, market, and we're going to, you know, and we can pick and choose who can actually do these things. The thousands of creators publishing across Kickstarter, DMs Guild, and more are a critical part of the D&D experience who we feel aren't paying us enough money. Um, this is part of what they think is under-monetized. And we will continue to support and encourage them to do that through one D&D and beyond. So they've realized they have a PR uh, catastrophe here, and they're trying to sort of spin this uh, in a way that makes it seem like it's not such a big deal. I think this is a really big deal. Now, I'm just going to briefly touch on their fan content policy because, you know, they did say, oh, listen, if you want to make a video, it would have to be through the fan content policy. And so it's kind of worthwhile to have a look at that and say, what is this? Like, why, why is that not something that, you know, fills you with joy? So let's uh, bring that up here. So Wizards of the Coast's fan content policy. We, that's Wizards of the Coast, are continuously amazed at our community's creativity and engagement. All right, let's skip on through that to, you know, some of the rules here. So first thing is that it requires it to be free, which means that it can't require any sort of subscription or registration to access. It can't be sold. Um, it must be free for others, including Wizards, to view, access, share, and use without paying you anything, obtaining your approval, or giving you credit. 
which means that if you use the fan content policy, wizards can, in theory, uh, take your stuff entirely out of whatever you've published and just stick it in one of their books. They don't even have to credit you. They can say, uh, you made this? No, no, I made this. This is mine now. So that's not thrilling. I don't like that. If I'm putting out things like new spells, I would like to think that if Wizards of the Coast were to borrow one of those spells and throw it in one of their books in future, that they would pay me some money, right? Or at least put my name in there. Like, I mean, even if I didn't make any cash, it would be really cool to have my name in the D&D book and the credits. Um, then I could say, hey, I'm a published D&D author. Well, no, they don't have to do anything like that. And if you, for instance, have stuff that's behind a Patreon subscription or, you know, a membership perk for, you know, a YouTube channel, you can't use this policy. Uh, you've got to tell them that it's unofficial. That's fine. Um, they say, don't use their trademarks. Don't mess with their legal notices. Don't use their IP in other games. Um, and don't use their video or music in your fan content. Now, they also note no bad stuff, and this is a really broad policy. We have the right to stop or restrict your use of Wizards IP at any time, for any reason or no reason, including when we think your use is inappropriate, offensive, damaging, or disparaging, and we'll make that call in our sole discretion. So, if we don't like your stuff, we can just kill it for no reason. Like, hey, I'm drunk, and this is funny. We'll just destroy that. I don't like that, so... Um, if this happens, you must immediately take down your fan content or face the demagogue. I hate when lawyers try to be too clever, but yeah, um, you know, basically they're saying that they will sue you. Um, now keep in mind that a lot of stuff that people put out online, they might think that they need a license for this, but might actually be permitted by copyright law. So that's, you know, itself its own question. Um, they have sort of similar things about sponsorships. Uh, you got to follow the law. That one doesn't seem too unreasonable. And there is a a clause here that is a, you know, a, an assignment of liability, essentially, which basically says if they end up in a lawsuit because of your stuff, which might include suing you personally, um, that you have to pay all of their expenses, including the attorney's fees, which is huge, and any resulting judgment or settlement. So if Wizards loses, you have to pay. Yeah, so you can see why I'm not thrilled about the fan content policy. Instead, I think that I would be putting out any of the stuff that I put out under just standard fair use, fair dealing, and the traditional principles that you can't copyright sort of underlying systems. Although that gets complicated and is way too long for me to explain in a video like this. But... Um, so to sort of wrap things up and explain kind of what I'm thinking on all of this, um, first, I mean, it's clear they, they realize that they have a PR disaster. They've probably been looking at uh, Twitter and so forth and seeing uh, open D&D &D trending. Frankly, keep that going because there needs to be pressure to get them to back down on this. Um, if you are in the business of making D&D &D content, and that includes just you're on YouTube, you should be freaking out right now. This should be making you upset and angry. And, you know, I'm not trying to be a rabble rouser here, but um, this really upsets me as a guy who just started a D&D focused or role playing game focused channel um, that just got monetized. I mean, this is a real um, this is a real bag of flaming poop that they left on my doorstep today and the doorsteps of many other um, content creators for the, you know, who are operating in that sort of D and D ecosystem. Anyway, I hope this clarifies things because um, I don't think wizards of the coast was trying to clarify things. I think they're trying to muddy the waters and to uh, put out fires by facilitating misunderstanding of what they're doing. So, the only way this gets changed is if there's pressure from the community and hopefully uh, people step up and keep doing that. Anyway, uh, let me know in the comments section below what you think, if this was helpful. Um, let me know as well if you think I'm being unreasonable. I don't, but um, I've been wrong before. 
Um, if there's a lot of comments from people going, hey, um, you know, we think that this is unreasonable or whatever else, I can try to make further videos and explain what I'm thinking and sort of show my work and back it up. Um, anyway, thank you for watching. See you guys next time.